Hi guys and welcome to another exciting episode of We the Doctors. My name is Dr. Jules and of course my colleagues are here, Dr. Yvonne. Hi, you're welcome to today's show. Dr. Valeria. Hello guys, you're welcome. And Dr. O.K. Welcome to today's show. Let's do this. Uh -huh. yeah. Today we are talking about prostate Prostate cancer. Don't worry. I'm so we we all, we're all meeting up most of the time. You know the truth. And then you always say prostate. Yeah. <laughs> you know the truth. Yeah. Oh my God. Back those days in medical school days, I used to write prostate cancer. And then we had this lecture. I don't recall his name. He's a professor. He always underlined my script. Oh my goodness. Yes. Mm. And it's a good thing you're highlighting that. So there is no R, please, in prostate. prostate. So yes. it's prostate, prostate cancer. Cancer. Okay. Prostate. It's the second leading cause of cancer death in men worldwide, following lung cancer. Yeah. Right. So we'll be talking about that today. It is not prostate. Hey, please, God. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll be talking about that today. So it is something. The the prostate itself. It's an organ that is found in the male reproductive system. It's usually beneath the bladder and at the just at the top of the urethra. That's mm -hmm. the passing of urine from the bladder to the outside of the um, the. It's just the one genitals. tiny walnut sized stuff. Yes. yes, under the bladder. Yeah. Exactly. Because when you tell the urethra, I don't want to where is this? Where is the urethra? Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm trying to be very, very. I don't want to be explicit in my description, but um, basically that's what it is, and it produces part of the seminal fluid that carries the. Of uh, the sperm, okay, yeah. during ejaculation. So when cancer um, affects this um, organ, of course, there's a problem. We'll be talking about the symptoms. Now, cancer, as we all know, is just an uncontrollable growth, yes. okay? And then the cells just keep multiplying. That's the cells of the uh, organ that is affected, keeps multiplying, and it can actually go out of its its uh, location of origin. So that's why it is such a deadly condition. Now, one of the we'll be talking about the symptoms so that you understand mm -hmm, how the person can present in the clinic. Now, one of the symptoms um, is talking about frequent urination. Now, I said that it is located around the bladder, so you can imagine if it is growing in size, it's impinging on the the bladder itself. So the person goes to urinate it more Very often often than yeah. not. When you when you talk to people that have prostate cancer, you hear them say, even when they just finished urinating, urinating. they just they have feel this, like they're yes. already pressed yes. again. Right. Because they have the prostate pushing from under the, the bladder. bladder. And now following that frequent urination, you find out that even when they cough or laugh, they just find out that they just dribble the urine on themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really so, not something yeah. very true. Basically, it's the, it's the, yeah. the size of the prostate is what actually causes the most of the symptoms yes. that we mm -hmm. see. And you can find things like difficulty in a person even initiating the process of urination. In the if first it, place. Exactly. No, or even so, so you are pressed, that. Yes. you go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. yes. you stand there, and, and the, nothing, nothing is coming out. What is happening is that the, pros the prostate is wrapped around the yeah. urethra itself. So it's a walnut size. And if the urine is supposed to pass through this pipe, yes. it is around that passage. Imagine it's it being enlarged. So exactly. It squeezes. It's squeezing that uh, uh, tube. So the person would definitely have difficulty in passing urine. And that's one of the major complaints that we have from people having this problem. And like I mentioned earlier, the cells are replicating. You cannot control it. And then yeah. it's going to other parts of the body. You see that the person will also complain of bone pains. So when the bones are being invaded, or the, even the nerves, mm -hmm. you see the person will complain of back pain At as well. At that point in time, we're even talking about metastasis is when you start having bone pain, like in cancer, mm -hmm. wherever you've left the prostate area and it's still moving out to, to other the bones. Other and that is the definition of metastasis. Because, because it makes before it sound gets, like it's one big word. No, no, no. That means that it's spreading, actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Before we even get there, one of the things that you find out they complain about is that they always have pain when urinating. Yes. All right? So they have that burning sensation when you, or even when ejaculating, there's pain. All right, and sometimes you know they also have blood in their urine. Yes. So blood in urine, for 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 example, is a, an early indication for a likelihood of having prostate cancer. So if you're an adult past the age of fifty, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll get to that later on. And you male, realize male, that oh, male, male definitely. Mm -hmm. prostate because prostate, I think we should say it now. <laughs> women do not have prostate. prostate yes. yes. So and women please, can don't never go come down with a prostate cancer yeah. because after this, you're going to find a woman now say, um, she's having oh, difficulty. Let's check. Maybe I have prostate cancer. This is what I'm not. No. Women do not have prostate. You don't yeah. have the prostate and again, the prostate and again, all these things we talked about, I know that there are many men that will be having these symptoms and think that, oh, it's this prostate cancer immediately.
be no. Yes. There's another condition that is similar to this, and mm. if not well looked at, can actually predispose one to this. Yes, yes you can have all yes. these symptoms yes. without yes. BPH, yes. yes. benign prostatic hyperplasia. So there are yes. yes. urinary tract infections. Exactly. Yes. So it doesn't mean that if you're having yes. this symptom, oh, because There's you find it difficult. Yeah. But if you, you have go these to the symptoms, hospital exactly. to get and yourself maybe checked. before we even move to another um, part of this talk, I want to mention that when you have a prostate cancer, just like every other cancer, there's a tendency to have a weight loss. Yes. yes. Weight loss, now the simplest way to explain it when we're in the clinic is by telling the patient that, you know, the cancer is eating the food that your body should be eating. Mm. But it's often not that way. So the cancer is secreting things that yeah. goes ahead to destroy cells. It's just important to understand it. So there is weight loss associated with this. So when you have these symptoms and you now have weight loss, it's time to run to the hospital. Honestly. Don't even wait for the weight loss. Exactly. Run to the hospital. Why are you waiting? Exactly. Get there. Get examined. Exactly. And please don't diagnose yourself. We are just giving you these you symptoms know? can be replicated in other conditions. Yeah. So bottom line, your doctor will make the diagnosis for you. We'll take a short break. We're talking about prostate cancer. When mm -hmm. we come back, we'll be talking about the risk factors. What puts you at risk of having prostate cancer when we come back after this short break? Hello, you're welcome back. It's with the doctors. We'll be talking about prostate cancer. I'm Dr. Yvonne, and now we'll be talking about the risk factors of prostate cancer. If you just joined us, you haven't missed much because I'm going to go back a bit up talking about what prostate cancer is. First of all, the prostate is a small, walnut-sized gland that secretes the seminal fluid, which nourishes and gives speed, or what I'll call motility, to the sperm. So basically that's what the prostate does. Normally in tissues and organs all around the body, there's normal cell formation and division that takes place. But in cases where abnormal cells are formed, like we spoke about earlier, then these begin to divide the same way the normal cells will divide. As this keeps on going on, it forms a mass, which is commonly called tumor. Yes, this is the cancer we are talking about. If it's located in the prostate, then you have a prostate cancer. Sometimes this can be caught early enough. We talked about so many signs and symptoms, so if you go to the hospital and you're diagnosed early enough, it can be successfully treated. But in cases whereby it now leaves this particular area and now has to go to other places we don't mm -hmm. want it to go to then it now becomes a little bit more difficult to control so we're talking about the risk factor the first one i like to talk about is age mm -hmm. most times in 99 percent of cases of this particular ailment we're talking about it is found in those age as in ranging from ages 50 to to so whenever and above, above. Yeah, exactly. exactly so these are the people that are more prone to this so in younger people you would not might not want to think that it might be prostate cancer even if they're having all the symptoms and the rest of them so is there any other um, and then there's race the gyms as well uh, yeah, yeah family history too yes. family history so yes. if you have a first degree relative or maybe anyone in your family that had a um, prostate cancer before or sometimes even if you're a man and there's a family history of breast cancer in exactly. your family it predisposes one to or if you have the genes for this breast cancer talking about the brca one, one and two, two exactly yeah. it predisposes so but just, i mean talking one, one thing i wanted to chip in talking about um the genes basically is that if you have a first degree relative, like mm -hmm. you talked about, a father or a brother mm -hmm. that had a prostate cancer, then you are two or three times at risk of having prostate cancer as well. Yes. So the people that have those kind of issues always want to deal with it early enough before mm -hmm. you start exhibiting the, the same So when you say deal with it early enough, are you saying um, go ahead and do a preventive prostatectomy? That will be left to you and your doctor to judge. <laughs> yeah, but at least, no, yes. what, what you are trying to say, if you yes. have a history because and you now start experiencing yeah. these yeah. signs and symptoms, then you should take you should proactive exactly, prompt action. And also yeah. ask, in our society, uh, you know, some families don't tend to share the real cause of, of the death, death in the family. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we share this information information health-wise because we Some don't always even know. Some don't even know. Some, might even some not present know. to the hospital at a very late stage. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, the person passes away. And so they don't even know the cause of death, actually. Especially if they don't do any autopsy yes, reports. Yes, That's autopsy what care. Who wants to stress the dead? Sadly, <laughs> here we see death now as a handrock of the good Lord, which is, not a, which is not a very good thing. But I think at the end of the day, autopsy would go a long way to find mm -hmm. out the yeah. cause, cause of, of death, death. Because of yeah. these things that we are talking about. But beyond but, this um, age and genetic factors... Yes, we have, have race. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We of uh, an African 
African descent, of course, they are predisposed to having uh, uh, prostate cancer. We are not saying these are causes now. The study have found it's out that people with these, factors, but yeah. they are risk factors. Is there any reason why African descent usually have a more risk of most of them? No, have no. Diet. Sometimes Caucasians to have their own. Yeah, you know, exactly. Oh, like I'm not about this. Yeah. Um, but, and when it, since you mentioned diet, I, in this case, I would disagree with the diet. Because um, statistics and studies on diet as related to prostate cancer show that people that have more red meat yes. mm -hmm. are likely to have prostate cancer. People that take more milk are likely to have prostate cancer. It's against people who have lots of vegetables. If you have lots of vegetables, then um, your chances of having prostate cancer is actually less. Lem. And what does that point out to you? Mm -hmm. We don't have as much red meat as the Caucasians do. We don't have as much milk as the Caucasians do. We don't have what we, we have. No, we don't no, take no, as no, much no, red no, meat. We have a lot of red meat. No, they take kidding? more red meat. I'm sure you're thinking about the food that they got to You're talking about the burgers and all of that. And even the hot dog, for example. Yes, is the hot dog not red meat? It was... I think one of the major set of people they used for the study was the African Americans. Mm -hmm. yes. They eat a lot of junk. Right. The African yeah. Americans yeah. have yeah. more. They eat a lot of junk. They eat a lot of red meat. The African Americans have yes. more red meat yes. than the Caucasian Americans. Yes. But if you look at population wise, compare the Caucasian Americans to the Africans in Africa. Okay, we'll take a quick break. <laughs> Let's take a quick break and then we'll continue this argument. Don't go far. Hello and welcome back to the show. My name is Dr. Okay and you are still watching We The Doctors. Earlier on we've been talking about prostate cancer and now we're at an interview session where we discuss with Dr. Lolade Adeyemi on prostate cancer. Just a brief on Dr. Lolade, she's actually the co-founder and chief operating officer of Magna Carta. Dr. Lolade, welcome to today's show. Thank you. Prostate cancer, that's our topic. And pretty straightforward question, how do you make a diagnosis of prostate cancer? Confirmatory diagnosis of prostate cancer is done by a biopsy of the prostate tissue. Okay. Before you do that, though, there are a series of other things that you will go through, tests or examinations, before you need to do that. Can we talk about the examinations and the tests? Yes. Yeah, so the most common thing or one obvious thing that you need to do is something called a DRE. It's the digital rectal examination, which is a doctor wearing a, a pair of gloves and using a lubricant and feeling through your rectum, your prostate gland. Now let me make it let me make it sound the way it is in the hospital. You know, when she says DRE, it sounds like it's a musical stuff. And then she goes ahead to say feeling through the rectum. The doctor has to put his finger through the backside. It's not a pretty comfortable procedure, but we'll try to make it as comfortable as possible. Yes. Yeah. And do you think that's why people run away from that diagnosis? They don't want to. Um, it's one of the reasons. It's an uncomfortable thing, but it's an important thing. There are other things that you can do that are not invasive. You can do a blood test, which you also will have to do depending on um, your your risk factors or your history. So a blood test is called a, a PSA test, which is the prostate specific antigen test. It's just, they will just take a blood sample like they're doing any other blood test and they will analyze that to see what your levels are. If your levels are between a particular range, um, you are at risk. They, they want to do other things. So you can start some people, doctors start from that side. They want to do the blood test because people are not comfortable. But the thing is when you do the blood test, it's actually, you still have to do the D DRA. Yeah, DRA. And so the blood, the rate, the values for the blood tests, um, there are two schools of thought. If it's less, your PSA is less than four nanograms per milliliter, then you're fine. Your PSA levels are fine. But some people say, no, you have to go as low as 2.5. So if it's zero to 2.5, you're at low risk for having prostate cancer. And I think the reason for the 2.5 is they want to catch it early. Exactly. Now let's talk about innovations in prostate cancer. Either management, treatment, diagnosis. What are the new things I say in the market? For okay, in cancer? the market, really, the one of the major things that people focus on really now is the prevention. Okay, and which is what this is the same thing it's so easy to get the test and it's so cheap anywhere you go you can get it for as low as 5700 naira i think okay. that paying 5000 6000 naira to check to see what your levels are would save you hundreds of thousands of how, naira how often should someone check those levels so again it depends on your risk factors um i think worldwide we've agreed that once you're 40 and above um, once from 40, you need to start getting checked. But then also, if you're 40 and you have a family history, you want to get it checked every year or even six every six months. If you're 45 and then you're 50, they say, um, depending on your risk factor. So once you're 40, get it. I would say once you're 40, you get it checked once every year. If you have a high risk, that means if you have a family history of prostate cancer or if you have some symptoms that you've noticed with um, they usually the, the symptoms are usually sexual or they're uh, urinary. urinary yeah. And so if you have some symptoms, those symptoms, 
symptoms and you and your PSA levels. Uh, so if you do it once when you're 40, okay. depending on the results, your physician will be able to tell you when to come back. Okay. Now, um, let me just throw it out now. Listen, um, if you are just joining us and you're a woman, we're discussing prostate cancer. This is one condition the doctor will always give you a clean bill of health. Because Absolutely. if you're a woman, you don't have a prostate. So <laughs> let's go back to the men. What are the complications that the men can have because of prostate cancer? So, uh, like I said, um, a lot of it, because of where the prostate gland is located and, and the function of the prostate gland, they're usually related to urinary symptoms, okay. their pr problems, and sexual problems. And then also, depending on if the prostate uh, cancer has started to spread, one of the places it spreads quickly to is the bones. Yeah. And so you can have some issues with your bones, bone pains and things like that. But really, it's sexual health problems such as so even after you do you have prostate cancer and they treat it you might still have some of those problems um for instance you could have the inability to sust to maintain or sustain an, an erection, erection. Okay. um and then even with your urination you might have problems with dribbling inability to empty and things like that so I'm talking of problems what are the survival rates what's prognosis like so again, prognosis depends on the stage of the cancer. So you have to stage the cancer to tell you how far you've gone, how how bad it is or how good it is. So that determines, but if the treatment, if it's, it's diagnosed early, there's a good survival rate of treating it. In fact, prostate cancer is one of the best cancers to have. It's not like cancer is good to have. Because uh, I wanted to just ask, how do you have a, a good bad <laughs> Because bad prostate symptom? cancer is actually one of the, some people say it's curable because you can treat it and it will go away. That's and true. you can have a 20 year survival rate, you know. But it depends really on the stage at which it is found prior to it spreading to other parts of your body. So basically, I'll take home from this interview is early diagnosis. Yes. So if you are 40 and you're man and you're watching this show there are two things you need to do now first of all walk into the hospital that's the first thing you should do pretty straightforward you do it almost every time so walk into the hospital and when you do that just tell the doctor you've come to have your prostate checked once you are 40 he may decide to start with a diary he may decide to start with PSA. diary the nice word he may decide to start with a diary or we'll do a psa that's just a blood test to find out what your levels are but walk into the hospital right now if you're above 40 and have your prostate checked. Dr. Demi, thank you for joining us. You're very That's welcome. Special. I will keep calling you back anytime we have any of these things to discuss. All right, thank you it's for having me. It's been nice having you also. Thank you very right. much. So that has been the interview on We The Doctors. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, the show continues. And the show continues. I have to be, play the umpire most of the time and create some form of peace. <laughs> Let's go back to the topic. We're talking about prostate cancer. And we'll be talking about the risk factors. I want to add another one, which is infection. Yeah. So uh, most people that have been exposed to sexually transmitted infections like gonorrhea, syphilis, chlamydia, yeah. Right? Yeah, that risk. Yeah. they are at risk of having prostate cancer. I so also found this very funny study. I, I, I want to believe it's not so true. But then again, uh, some researchers you know, had the thing to less with um, prostate cancer with it. They said that men that have an average of 20, um, one... Why do you look so excited? Wait, no, no, because, because it's interesting. Average, they said that advice. men that have an average of um, ejaculation 21 times in, in a month mm -hmm. are at lower risk yes, yeah. of having prostate cancer. I saw the study also. All right. You didn't that say that one time. Now, the, 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 is, the study said that the higher the ejaculation you have, the lower the your lower risk. risk. Right. Now, now those are not mean that you should have to blow into Babylon. Sorry? To being faithful. Because that's no, 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 that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm getting to. Now, mm -hmm. the same thing it now says that men will have multiple... Yeah. sexual partners mm -hmm. at higher risk, risk yeah. exactly. of having prostate cancer. Okay. And also says that um, men who started having sexual activity at an earlier yeah, age, early age had increased risk of having prostate cancer. So what this implies means, the general is that, what, what does it mean? <laughs> okay, go ahead and tell It means that with your wife, I don't know why they are so excited. Partner, I don't know. You can try as much as possible. You know, to so they should be sexually active exactly. to reduce yeah. their, home. lower their risk. To lower their risk. Yeah. I'm sure all At the home. male viewers are very happy partner. with that. No, but with your wife. Hmm. Yeah, because no, they've heard the other one yeah. that, that multiple, whatever. You know, we had. Um, <laughs> but you know, so what happened? We're not telling that multiple is a lot. 
Okay. You understand? Don't try to so introduce like, the next thing. Multiple entry, the double entry. So if you don't have two, it's okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Dr. If you have your contributions, you can go to our Twitter page. You follow us at <laughs> We the Doctors. Tell us all about what you know about prostate cancer. We're willing to listen. And if you have questions, we'll also And of course, that. about so, what Dr. Wani exactly. has mentioned. So we'll be going over to the streets now to talk about prostate cancer. Please stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. It happens due to lack of exercise and strenuous activities. That's what causes some um, prostate glands and cancer, mm. right? I know it has to do with um, the prostate region, the waist region, when uh, men, and it usually affects men, when they don't get enough exercise. Uh, they don't do much training. And you know, with the nature of work in Nigeria, the stress level, when it's much and People don't have regular exercise to find a way to ease the stress. I of exercise and... <laughs> don't know. Don't know. It's going to be from the layman angle of it, basically, because I'm not a doctor. But from what I heard, that people normally have it, because I, for once, I feel it has to do with lineage. Because for prostate, not the cancer. My grandfather had it. My father just recently had it. So it's, it's, I also have the tendency that I might have it, but it's natural. Just like when you say a woman has fibroid. Fibroid is natural in every woman. But the level of the growth is now what is different, basically. And also, but what causes it? Well, to an extent, I might not be able to tell you. But it's only when prostate is not well taken care of at the point where it, it's growing, that it becomes cancerous. But like what I've been told is that when a man is getting towards the age of 40, he needs to go on raw tomato and watermelon more often when you are getting close to 40. That way you can, one way or the other, get out of having a prostate. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is We The Doctors. My name is Dr. Waleria, and we have been talking about prostate cancer. We talked about the symptoms, we talked about the causes, we talked about the risk factors, that, I mean, things that can predispose you to um, prostate cancer. It's been quite an interesting episode so far. Now, in this segment, we're going to be telling you about um, things that you need to do or you can do to prevent having uh, prostate cancer. Dr. K. Um, I always start with my red meat story. Yeah. I would say cut down on red meat okay. and cut down on high fat diet okay. basically. And if you do that, I think you should. But it's hard yeah. to do in our environment. You see, when you go to let's not food, start, let's you not can start. like to eat And they're pointing all sorts of things. And I tell them to it's give you that like yeah. five no, but, salted meat. No, but it's important to mention now, the roundabout you're eating your mm. salted meat is actually high fat diet. Mm. Let's mm. get it clear. And then the alternative, the red meat, is also red meat. So is the frequency is how much you how take? Much you take. Yeah. We're not condemning the, the meat, it's, it's, yes. it's the quantity. Don't mm. save your whole meal as And even much more is the processed meat. Yes, that's yes. true. Hot dogs and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, basically. The burgers. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm. Dr. Exactly. Evil. Exactly. Okay, but talking about diet still. So you want to go to diet rich in fruits and vegetables as sure. always. Ah. You can never go wrong. Exactly. You take a lot of fruits and vegetables. Sometimes it's also things. interesting. Do you know that oh this, my God. these are even you basic are advice that we yes. give every other yeah. individual? Yeah. Another thing is exercise. So we're talking about don't eat red meat. It goes for everybody. It's not peculiar to you. Oh my so God. Some people will die. You limit red meat. <laughs> 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 Limit your mm. the red meat that you eat. Increase your fiber intake. Exercise. My goodness, I can't even emphasize that enough. It covers most of the ailments that we've been mm. talking about. Mm. So just please start in any little way that you can. Mm. Even if it is 10 minutes a day, you can increase it 10 minutes three times a week, you can build it up to 20, exactly. 30, just start. Yeah, I'm bringing at least 30 minutes three times in a week. Yes. Yeah. Good but one. I'm just trying because to, you find a lot of people, to step it up. Don't you find just some people 30 minutes. telling you that naturally they exercise. 
How? And I say that they trek they from track. one place <laughs> before they go and get the bus. That every day they no. excite. That the exercise what they do, doctor, you know they do. Well. You know. don't know what's in my eye they see. Yeah, but please tell them that there's yes. a difference between stress exactly. and exercise. Even yeah. your body knows the one you are doing. So exactly. you cannot deceive your body. And then lastly, exactly. if you have a family history of prostate cancer, right? Please go and see a doctor yes. because there are some medications that you can start taking early enough sure. mm -hmm. that can help you to reduce your risk Speaking of having of that, prostate we cancer. I have a question on it. Um, funny enough, the person bears my name. His name is OK. OK says that my father had prostate cancer. Can mm -hmm. I take off my own prostate to prevent it? That's the first question we have. Mm -hmm. and then we also have a second question. The second question is also about his father. He said that my father has refused to do a prostatectomy, that is a surgery to remove, remove the prostate. Mm -hmm. Because he fears, um, as they've counseled him, that he'll damage, damage nerves that help him have erection. And then the next alternative, he has also refused. They've asked him to remove the testicles. Mm -hmm. Which man will want to take away? Because mm -hmm. he says he has to, whenever he dies, he must have his testicles with him. With him. Now, there's like three questions in, in one. How do we, um, how can he go ahead to cancel his dad? That's what the second person is asking. It's not his job to cancel his dad. Mm -hmm. It's the doctor's the doctor, job. It's yeah. the professional's job yes. to outline you know, everything. But he, he can and also provide. Bottom outline line, that costs the problem. Bottom the line, space. the decision is still on that patient. Nobody forces anybody to take yeah. any medical exactly. condition. But the most important thing is that they're making an informed decision. decision. Yes. People that There are people that even refuse taking blood transfusion yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. They know the benefits, but mm. they choose not to. Mm. So you want exactly. to get them. You may probably have somebody that they believe in that they respect. Bit. That can come with him and, and it's then not talk even a big deal, really. It. It's not a big deal. A lot of people exactly. get to do this. Every surgery has its well. risk, yeah. so it might not turn out that way. <laughs> They've had court cases that way. Someone said he was sexually harassed because they did a digital. By the male doctor. Probably they did not counsel him before the, male doing doctor the procedure. Did it and they I just put a finger in his bum. If it is indicated, okay, the specialist has the good judgment yeah. to the know when exactly to have you properly investigated. <laughs> yeah, properly yeah, investigated Thank properly. you very much. Thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter. It's at We The Doctors, and you can watch our previous episodes as well. We we'll see you again next time. We're saying bye bye, bye guys. and stay healthy. Yeah. If you're not just enjoy the video they wanna just watch, make sure to sharply, sharply subscribe to our channel. Not darling.